By popular demand, this is now our fourth Xiafansai, or over rice dish, video. But with this one, we wanted to focus on stuff specifically from the Hunan province, which we think actually might just be up there with the most rice murdering of any cuisine anywhere. So, as we always do with these, we'll be showing you one basic, lazy, college dorm style stuff in a jar that you can just pick up at your local Chinese supermarket, which today will be in the form of Waipo Tsai, aka Grandmother Vegetable. Then we'll show you one Western supermarket friendly dish, today with some chili fried shredded pork and eggs, and finally one vegetarian friendly dish via a bit of braised tofu puffs. So, first up, Waipo Tsai. Now like pretty much all this sort of stuff that just comes in a jar, if you wanted to, you could literally just take this guy and dump it on some rice. Waipo Tsai is a combination of different kinds of dried and fermented vegetables, usually some sort of mix of daikon and mustard green, and seasoned with a good bit of chili pepper. But if you can't find something that explicitly says that it's Hunanese grandmother vegetable, don't worry all that much. There's loads of similar eat me with rice pickle mixes out there on the market. Something like this would also work great. So then, while dumping and enjoying is certainly a valid enough option, usually in Hunan you'll see grandmother vegetable whipped up into a simple little stir fry. To make it, as always when frying, first long yao. Get your wok piping hot, shut off the heat, add in the oil, here about one tablespoon, and give it a swirl to get a nice nonstick surface. Flame on low now, toss in two cloves worth of minced garlic, together with about a centimeter of minced ginger, and fry those till fragrant, or about 30 seconds. Next, go in with six fresh chili peppers cut into one centimeter slices. These guys were fresh Argentale chilies, which Serrano's would be a pitch-perfect sub for, but feel free to use jalapenos, bird's eye if you're a masochist, really whatever fresh chilies you like. Then after another 30 second fry, go in with 125 grams of your grandmother vegetable. We'll want to toast out the sourness of the pickles, so swap the flame too high and stir fry it for about three minutes. Once the vegetable is a bit dry and no longer sour tasting, swirl in a teaspoon of soy sauce and give it another quick mix. Now, this guy is completely ready to serve as is, but you can also use this as a base and fry up really whatever you want. Minced pork is a classic, did it with cubes of smoked tofu, and today we're gonna be tossing in 150 grams of blanched edamame because we like it and want to eat it. So swap the flame to medium and give that another quick fry for another minute or so. And because our edamame isn't seasoned yet, we'll also go in with a quarter teaspoon each salt and sugar, an eighth teaspoon white pepper powder, and a sprinkle of MSG. Another quick 30 second mix and out. Grandmother vegetable with or without the additional vegetable, done. Next dish, chai gu ro ho bao dan. Now the essence of this dish here is, at its core, repurposing and making use of leftovers. You see, often when you're making Chinese stocks, you tend to leave a little more meat on the bone than you would as if you were making a Western stock. This dish is a way to use up that leftover stock meat. You scrape the pork off the bone, shred it, and you're gonna use that stuff to fry. Now, if you do wanna make a Chinese style stock, definitely don't let me stop you, but you can really use whatever shredded meat that's convenient for you. I know that rotisserie chickens are cheap and popular in the West, so we tried shredding a bit of that too and also perfectly delicious, because of course. So by whatever, we really do mean whatever. Shredded chicken thighs, maybe some beef shanks, leftovers from a barbecue joint, anything handy. Just make sure that you got 150 grams worth and you're good to go. So to fry, give your wok quick long yo with about three tablespoons of oil and over a high flame, drop in three whole eggs. Let those puff up a bit about one minute, then flip the eggs over and fry for another minute. Once those are cooked through, break them up into about one inch chunks. And as you can probably tell, you really don't have to be too paranoid about this whole process. Just continue to fry those chunks for about a minute or two till the pieces are good and blistered, then season that with a quarter teaspoon of salt. Quick mix, then remove. Same walk, toss in another two tablespoons of oil. And before you say anything, this is Hunan food, fear not the oil. Over a high flame now, add in your shredded meat and let that fry. You wanna give it a chance to brown, so don't be overly aggressive with your stirring. Lay it in a single layer, and giving a mix only about every 30 seconds or so feels about right to us. So, after about three minutes of frying, the meat should be slightly browned like so, so scooch it up the wok, and go in with another tablespoon of oil. 
Then over a low flame, we'll add in some aromatics. This was two cloves of garlic, a centimeter of minced ginger, and two hot chilies. These were fresh heaven-facing peppers, but you could also use Thai bird's eye or any hot fresh chilies that you have local. Then, once fragrant, about 30 seconds, recombine with the brown meat and add back in the fried chunks of egg. After another quick mix, pour about a teaspoon of soy sauce over your spatula around the sides of the wok, then go in with six fresh chilies cut into slices. These guys were the same Argenkale chilies from the last dish, mix of red and green for the sake of good looking, but again, you could use serranos or really whatever. Then season that with a quarter teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon sugar, an eighth teaspoon white pepper powder, and a sprinkle of MSG. Quick mix, then go in with 20 grams of green garlic cut into one inch sections which we are aware is like this seasonal farmer's market sort of deal in the West, so do feel free to swap that for an equal amount of scallion cut in the same way. Quick mix, and out. Chaiguro hobaldan, done. Last up, braised tofu puffs. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you guys are probably already intimately familiar with tofu puffs, but just in case you aren't, they should be available at basically every Asian supermarket and love to suck flavor like it's their job. An absolute must for hot pots. For this dish, we'll be cutting them in half and giving them a quick blanch. So, to a liter and a half of boiling water, toss in a teaspoon of salt together with your tofu puffs. Cover and let those boil together for two minutes. No more, no less. Then strain, rinse with cool water to stop the cooking process, and once they're cool to the touch, squeeze out the excess water. Then just toss those in a bowl and set that aside. Now, to fry, first long yo with a quarter cup or so of oil. Then over a low flame, toss in two cloves of minced garlic together with a centimeter of minced ginger. Fry that for 30 seconds till fragrant. Then go in with one tablespoon of dojiao, hunan chopped chilies, but you could use pretty much any fermented chili product you have in a pinch. Then go in with a half tablespoon of chili powder and continue to fry that over the same low flame. You're looking for the oil to start to stain ever so slightly red, about two to three minutes. Then toss in two fresh chili peppers and swap the flame to high. After a quick 30 seconds or so of frying, pour one tablespoon of liaojiu, aka Shaoxing wine, over your spatula and around the sides of the wok. And after a quick mix, go in with the blanched tofu puffs. Give that another good mix, swirl in a teaspoon of soy sauce together with a half teaspoon of dark soy sauce. Then dump in a quarter cup of water together with the seasoning, which I'll list on the screen. Then cover, let that cook for another 30 seconds, then uncover and go in with four more fresh chilies cut into slices. The first two were to flavor the stir fry and these ones basically to munch on. Then toss in 20 grams of green garlic or scallions, same deal. Give that a quick stir and out. Braised tofu puffs, done. So Hunan food is like this ultimate rice murdering cuisine. Many of its dishes are cut into smaller pieces and uh, more heavily seasoned and are just like meant to be eaten with rice. I mean, devour. And honestly, in our opinion, it feels like the whole Hunan cuisine can just be fed into this type of videos. So right, check out the recipe in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.